Juicy steak is good. My yeah. favorite what, thing to eat was raw cauliflower. I like that. I but still like that. Teeth the way they are. I can't chew nuts anymore. I can't chew raw vegetables. So That's hard. You ever get your teeth? Yeah. Sometimes when I get new teeth, maybe. <laughs> good morning, evening. <laughs> good morning, evening. <laughs> morning, evening. Almost said morning. Good morning. Man, you can all move up front and still would Philip, you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, keep moving. We've got a lot of room here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I remember when Arliss and Lou got saved, and uh, Arliss got up to testify. And, and for many years, this was, uh, this was the way it was. I don't know if it was because Arliss was the boss or what, but anyway, she said, when the church doors are open, we'll be there. And if we've got company, they can either come go with us or go home. I was impressed with that because they always were. Yeah, it's every service. She was an awesome lady. The kids all loved her dearly. Yeah. I did too, but I wasn't a kid. I didn't know her until Travis came out. But anyway, she was an awesome lady. She was. Um, We've had a lot of awesome people here that aren't here anymore. Miss them. Miss them big time. Some of the awesome ones have come back. Yeah. That, that's awesome to us. I mean, you when people leave and go to heaven, the only way we're going to see them is to go to heaven. Uh, but when people leave and then it's like a part of you went with them. It's, it's like... And they just fit right back in with it. Yeah. yeah. And so it's it's really... Um, I go home and my, and my daughter, and this sounds weird, but she'll say, uh, how's Jeannie feeling? She's fine. How's Betty? I, Betty's not doing good. Uh, out of Edith and Rod, but she's never been. She met Don. She wants to know how Don is. She was not impressed with me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, don't take that personal. No, no. Because no. she's, she's just not a social She's person. not a Christian. <laughs> and so she talk to people. looks at people. She doesn't talk to people. Not even. Carly, that's not true. I, I seen her in the grocery store here about six months ago, and I seen her in two or three different spots in the store, and she likes to talk my leg. Missy. <laughs> she she likes you, Jeannie. She didn't always. Oh <laughs> uh, no, she didn't always like Jeannie. 
And, but anyway, um, they always loved Heva. All my family talk about Heva. Because Heva was the was a good character. guardian angel that took care of Travis. And so my kids don't forget that. They ask how Heva's doing. And uh, because Heva was a blessing. Anyway, you're all a blessing to me. I'm glad to see Pat back. I'm glad to see each and every one of you. And so let's get ready to have our services. Um, I guess we'll start with Heath. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to open in prayer. Oh, it's not there. It's sitting right down top. I had it all right there. That said, that, that, well, unless I picked it up. Let's see if I, no, I'm looking for Peter. Who? Peter's son. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. We don't do it at night. We don't do it, Holly. We don't do it at night. Sweet, sweet, sweet. This is the one for the night. Yeah, these are the nights. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. We don't do it. This. No, we do it this this morning. Oh, just in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just used to you doing it, so I'm just going to let you do it again. <laughs> Anybody have a testimony? Can we open it for Can we open it for her? No. <laughs> yes. We'll open it for her. <laughs> I didn't mean that out of the way. <laughs> See, you, you guys think I'm a nice person that can take that. I can at this point in time. <laughs> we'll open in prayer first. Okay, here we go. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just thank you, Father, for, for this time that we can spend together in your house. And Father, we thank you for everyone that showed up. Father, we hold up all of those that aren't here tonight and that, Lord. We don't know what they're doing, where they're at, or whatever, but Lord, I just uh, right. pray that you bring remembrance to their home yes. and that they always think about you regardless of what they're doing, Lord. Look out after them and that, Lord. And for those of us here in your house tonight, Lord, I pray that you anoint us all with the Holy Spirit, Lord. And let this uh, night and evening be, Lord, to glorify you and help us to worship you, Father. And just give us all a love and touch with your Holy Spirit, Father. And we love you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I went to a, a memorial yesterday to one of my friends, and that very Holy Ghost filled memorial and that. But this one friend of mine that passed away with cancer. Put that and that, huh? Put that closer. Do you mean say you can't hear me? <laughs> but anyway, he uh, he was he was such a sincere man. When I first met him, I thought he could not be real. And he had so much love in him. And that, and and every time I ever met him, and I'd seen two or three times a week sometimes, and that and that guy, he'd just walk up to you, and that hand would go out there to shake your hand, and he always said, "How are you doing?" And you know the way he said, that's what he said, "How are you doing?" You know, and that and then once he once you, I mean, it took me a while to get used to trying to respond to that. Because he did it every time, you know. But no matter what I said to that that guy and that, he he he'd say, I, I really care about you, you know, or I'm gonna be praying for you. You know, I mean he was just That uh, sounds like that guy that you brought out to a couple of potlucks here. But he think he'd been gone a long time already. Yeah, no, this is a yeah, <clears throat> this is he was just a wonderful friend and you know, um the reason I mention him in that is because the Lord took him home, but you could just feel the presence of the Lord there with everybody there in memory of him. And that it was awesome just to feel the Holy Spirit in that. Thank so, that David, very nice. David Stevens? Huh? Was that David Stevens? No, David Purcell. Yeah. Betty sounds like she could sing bass tonight. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good testimony. I. Um, well, I know. Look at her, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> I've had to feel 
sorry for uh, my daughter's caregiver. Her birthday was uh, yesterday, and she was going to this wedding down in Camp Lamb, I think. And uh, uh, Linda was there, Linda Hartman. Belinda Hartman, you know the little kids, okay. Anyway, she called up crying because it was her birthday. Her friend disinvited her because she didn't want people wishing her happy birthday on her wedding day. Oh my! And she cried, and I thought, love. That's what God tells us to do: is love. Yeah, because um, if we don't love that, it's, you know, I wasn't really in love with that lady driving the car up here tonight, but, <laughs> but, uh, Susan preached right at Corny this morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she said, she said, when the, even when a car, the person driving a car does something, she said, I don't, oh no, you don't do that anymore. <laughs> Well, I never did do that. But she grumbled. But I grumbled. Because she waited until she got coming up Bunker Hill. And she was doing 45 all the way from town. And waited until she got going up towards Bunker Hill. And I tried to pass her and she hit 70. I went a little bit over 70 to get past her because then she slowed clear down and stayed way back. <laughs> and I grumbled. Uh, I just said, Lady, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> That's what I said. Anyway, That's I said well, we're, <laughs> we're here to celebrate. Celebrate the Lord. Yes. That's what we're here for tonight. Well, I, I want to say that I, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed the service this morning. The thing I really thoroughly enjoyed, uh, you guys, I'm not being, I'm not pointing fingers, but we have one worshiper in our church, and you guys don't get to see it because it's Betty. Uh, Betty is a true worshiper. Uh, she gets lost in the music, and you know she's sometimes up here praying in tongues quietly, but because of other things that's going on, Betty is a true worshiper. Um, but we've kind of gotten out of the habit of being free in our worship, and. It was awesome to look over there and see Susan and Karen about ready to break out of the polka because they were really enjoying it. I don't polka. No. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. They were just awesome to have that freedom to worship. You know, sometimes we worry about what the person sitting next to us would think if we, you know, well, it's just like God told me, don't worry about what they think, worry about what I think. I just shut my eyes. It was awesome. I enjoyed the service. It was an awesome, yes. awesome message. It was, it was really good. It was something I really could understand. So, that was good. Well, I think no one has a testimony. Yeah, uh, Dawn. I just have a thank you to Daniel. Because, uh, you know, even when he's mad at me, and other people, he'll he'll come rescue you. So I I I appreciate that. <laughs> well, I'm thankful for Daniel too. Learn to check the water. <laughs> he's he's got to have a lot of God in him to put up with you. He does. I'm sorry to say. <laughs> it, it, no, it's, true. it's true. My mom texted me and says I texted her what I did because I did it to her 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 car. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she said, can I hit you from long distance or something? And, and I'm sure he's thought that many a times. <laughs> well, that's when God uses those things to teach us, you guys. Yes. The Holy Ghost. <laughs> Even if we're upset with somebody, we can still love them and, yeah. and help them. Amen. I know. I came home with my garage was empty. I don't know what they did. But... They cleaned it out. Huh? They cleaned it out. They cooked up things. <laughs> Anyway, that's all right. It belongs to the Lord, not me. So. You really, you really had something stolen from your garage? Huh? 
Huh? You had something stolen from your garage? Well, I walked drove in my garage and there was none of this stuff was there. I thought, where'd it go? Well, I guess they came and took it, but that's all right. It, you know, you can take everything I have, but you can't take Jesus. And that's where we stand right now. Okay, I think we'll take up offering first. That way it won't be.
We used to sing, Send Down the Rain, Lord. Send Down the Rain. And the reason we did, because there's power in the rain. There's healing in the rain. There's freedom in the rain. And God's going to start pouring down on us. I really believe He is. I, I, we've been, I, not just me, uh, we've been going, I've been going through a really dry spell. I've been going through it for a long time, five years maybe. Um, and what I would do, and I said this this morning when I testified, what I would do is that I would just shut everything off. I wouldn't think. Now I'm going to tell you a little secret. If God can get us, if the enemy can get us and get our mind off God, he's got half the battle won. If we empty our minds and don't put God first, the enemy's going to put lots of things in here to, to, to really foul things up. A couple weeks ago, I, I don't even know if I, it was a vision or, I, I mean, I really don't know. But I was standing looking out over the church. And I don't know how many of you have been south, uh, but when you're coming uh, like on to Las Vegas, you drive for miles and miles and miles, and you can see this haze laying over the city, the pollution. And while I was standing here looking, I could see a haze, not a bad haze, but a haze beginning to form in here. And God said, Sorrow lasts for the night. Weeping lasts for the night. But joy comes in the morning. Because the light is what we need in our lives. We need God's light. We need to focus on Him, not on the people next to us. We need to focus on what He wants for our lives. We need to draw light and sustenance and healing from Him. We've been studying the Psalms in Sunday school for the last three weeks. And uh, I really had never paid a whole lot of attention to Psalms. Uh, to me it was kind of dull and boring and re re repetitive. But David learned a, a mighty lesson. And uh, I got this message from the Lord like I told you a week or so ago. And I, I kept saying, well, this isn't really it. And he'd say, yes it is. So I had written down my scriptures earlier in the week. And God did three things to convince me that I was supposed to bring a message. Um, and I laid in bed all night long and did it over and over and over and over and, you know, thought all of the things I was going to say. Well, I have no idea what I'm going to say. God told me that. Just open your mouth and I'll give you the words. But in his psalms, David would do one thing first. My Sunday school girl is here. What would he do first? Repent. He would repent. And he was deadly serious when he repented. And then he asked God to do some specific things for him. And then he said, I'll teach the people. That was the third thing that he did after he repented and recommitted his life. But David was wise. He would go to get refillings. Uh, you know, we can't just put water in our radiator once, can we, dog? <laughs> and forget about it. We've got to keep an eye on it. We've got to, we, we have to go to the source and get the water to fill it up. The same thing with the fuel, the same thing with the oil. There is a maintenance that we have to do, and that is to keep our eyes on the Lord, not look to the right, not look to the left, but keep our eyes on Him and follow the example that Jesus set. Now, one of the quickest ways to get your mind off God is to worry. Worry, <laughs> if you're worried, I mean, it's sin. It really is. I say, well, I don't worry. I trust God for everything. I've heard people say that. Yes, you worry. You worry if the lady in front of you is going to drive fast when you try to go past her. <laughs> you worry when your husband has to go on dialysis. You worry when you fix food. Is it going to be all right? You worry, you worry, you worry about money, you worry about your daughters, you worry about your sons, you worry all the time. 
And God tells us to not worry because he'll take care of us. Don't tell me you don't worry. And when you're worrying, what happens? You got your mind off of what God's talking to you. You're listening to what the enemy's saying. Totally cut yourself off. I did that. I let myself fall into a deep, deep depression. Uh, Coralie has been excellent to be uh, a good prayer partner, and, and Betty has too, and Karen, I know you have too. Because uh, I've, I've really wallowed through it. I've made some stupid mistakes. I've said and done stupid things, and when I go to bed at night, that's when the enemy likes to remind me, well, oh, you did that, you said this, you acted that way. Um, and I, I, I just tell myself, God can't forgive that, because I do it over and over. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. And he reminded me that he forgave me, forgave me immediately when I asked, but I didn't forgive me. I thought um, there were some things that I wanted. I thought that um, there were some things I needed. I thought that uh, I knew better than anybody else what would make me happy. And the uh, thing I did, I didn't, and I thought I was helping. That was a, the main thing. I thought I was helping a situation. And I only made it worse because I wasn't relying on God. I thought I was, but I wasn't. And I only made it worse. I caused damage by being <coughs> looking the other way sometimes. Uh, I spent a lot of time waiting for things to happen that I thought should happen that never happened. And then I would stoop and worry over it. I cut myself off from God and I made a deep, deep hole for my depression. So this last, when I got this vision about seeing a haze over everything, God told me that what's happened here, not just with me, but with many of us, we laid aside our joy. God tells us to be joyful because we have eternal life. God tells us to be joyful in our praise and in our worship. God tells us he inhabits our praises and our worship. God tells us he wants to hear from us on a regular basis. He doesn't want us to shut our ears and shut our minds and shut our hearts. He wants us to hear him, and he wants to do things in our lives for us. We are the guilty ones who rob ourselves because we're busy doing other things like worry. Um, we were talking out on the front porch tonight. Lou has a heart condition. I have a heart condition. This is a real physical heart condition. Uh, Don has a heart condition. Uh, and we're standing there saying, I take this pill and I take that pill. I think one of the hardest things I ever did in my life, and I it may very well have started in me at that point in time, was the night I looked over. I was sitting at the dining room table in the parsonage. And Travis was in his chair, it looked like he was asleep, but he'd already gone to be with the Lord. And I remember, you know, I have the power to go over there in the name of Jesus and tell him to get up. And I was afraid to do it. I sit here in church sometimes and I hear the message of tongues. And I have it. And I'm afraid to do it. Because one I know not everybody approves of me and not everybody likes the way I do things and not everybody likes the way I am pushy. Um, so I tell myself, just keep your mouth shut. Just you know, sit over there. And... There was a time when I would fight a bobcat, and I told you all that before, but that's gone. God's taken that out of me, and I thank him for that. But in the meantime, I allowed the oil in my lamp to get low. I allowed my commitment to get lax. I allowed my uh, spirit of uh, uh, renewal. My, my spirit wasn't right. Um, and you know, I, I went a long time. I'm glad the Lord didn't come um, and take me before because I don't know that I'd have made it. I know one thing that I miss most about church 
as I miss the old days. I miss the freedom of the spirit. I miss the nights when maybe we never heard the word preached. All we did was praise and be touched by the Lord, bathe in his presence, and soak up and go home and be ready for the week. I went through five years of starvation. I did. I did it to myself. I didn't have to do it. I'm not saying that any of you do, but I think there are times when we are in a starvation mode, and we need to recognize all we have to do is what David did. You know, David was a rotten, rotten scoundrel. He was an adulterer, he was a liar, he was a murderer. He was bad. And when Nehemiah confronted him, David recognized that he was wrong, and so he repented. Repented, recommitted. Anyway, there were several things. I, there was a couple of messages I heard on, on uh, TV that uh, said that were along the lines of what I'm talking about here, and I thought, yeah, okay, Lord, you're that you know, I'm supposed to. Well, the biggest one, and I'm not going to go through them because it's long. Well, the Lord and I had several days of <laughs> really working things out. The last thing I did yesterday was I had a Sunday school class, and usually I sit down and go through and know during the week what's coming up. But I had not studied what psalm we were going to be in today. And you know what psalm it was? It's the same one that I wrote down. God was showing me this morning. I mean, I came prepared for a good Sunday school lesson because I, God had been dealing with me all week on this one. And that's when David, in Psalms 51, cried out, Create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. Help me, poor me. Cast me not away from their presence, and take not thy holy presence from me. Restore unto me, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. That's what my Sunday school lesson was this morning. That's what God laid on my heart a week ago to say, you don't need to sacrifice your joy. Yes, we're old. Yes, we're tired. Some of us are sick. But you know what? God's not done with us. He's not done with us until he says he's done. And he expects us to continue on and not be like me, negative Sally, <laughs> but to be positive and encouraging. Uh, God expects us to use the talents that he gave us for him. Uh, I remember one time Grady told me, well, when I'm out there singing in the clubs, now he wasn't singing in church, but at that point in time he was out singing in the clubs, I'm touching people. And I said, yes, you are. You're touching people. You need to touch people in church, too. People in church need to be fed and renewed. Their oil needs changing. They need cleaning up. They need to know they need to change and do what God said. God said, you know, uh, i got to put my glasses on here because I'm blind. <laughs> uh, and then I write this. I can't read my own writing. Uh, Luke 10. <laughs> Luke 10. He says, rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Uh, I really can't read, you guys. Uh, Psalms 51 is restore unto me. Psalms 85 and 6 is will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you. That's something that comes right out of Psalms. You just have what? You're going to revive us. You need to revive us. We can't do it in ourselves. We can't make up our mind that we're going to do a, a, a good job this week and not, you know. We can't do anything without the power of God. Because the first time we forget about that power, we slip. I don't know about you, but I do. We need to daily ask God for the I know a lot of people believe that once you're saved, you're always saved. Uh, I believe God calls you, and I believe He saves you, and when He saves you and forgives you, uh, 
you're, you're saved. But I do believe that there's times when you walk out from underneath the covering of the blood and you do things on your own. And I do think you need to repent and get back under the covering. I don't think God is a good old boy up in heaven who's going to say, well, I know you're going through a tough time. And I know it's hard. We have, we have a bench here. I, spent, I came early. I spent some time on my knees praying tonight. I don't know how long it's been since I've seen anyone down there praying. Serious. I do not remember the last time I saw anyone down there praying. And as soon as pastor's done and gives the blessing, everybody's up and out the door. Nobody stands around to see, Betty, do you need help? Do you need prayer? Do you need this? Do you need that? We don't ask that anymore, guys. We just get up and get up. And God doesn't want that for this church. This church has been a lighthouse on the hill for as many years as I've been going here. It's a place to come to be healed. And many times, God takes the people that he brings here and saves and gets them started, gets them established, and takes them somewhere else because he's given them a job to do. This is still a lighthouse on the hill. This is still a hospital where people need to come and get their broken spirits uh, mended, get their tanks filled up. The nicest thing about Old Point Church is that people love you. doesn't matter. Nobody thinks they're better than anybody else. Nobody looks down on people. You may think you're not as good as someone else, but God says you are. God says to love your brother as yourself. You know, I've said this a hundred times, but when there's a group picture, who's the first person you look at in that picture when you, you see it for the first time? You look at yourself. You look at yourself. Because that's your center. God says he's the center. I came in this morning and I said to Edith, well, I'm going to tell you what I said. <laughs> it was along the lines of, she's back. She's back. Um, I just thought, Edith, can you see it? Can you feel it? Yes. Can you tell? Yes, I can. There's something that God did for me this week that he hasn't done in a long, long, long time. And I'm thinking that some of you out there haven't had something special in a long, long, long time. I believe God expects us to repent often. He's the God of many chances. He wants us to repent often. He wants us to recommit often. He wants us to be fed often. He wants us to drink of the living water often. How long is your physical body going to last if you don't have food, if you don't have water? Well, your spiritual body is a lot more important, and your eternity is important. And the only way you're going to get there is you keep your spiritual body in mind. Focused on God, fed and watered, and trying to do the best you can. Just going through the motions doesn't cut it. And like I said, I know we're all old and a lot of us have health problems and our backs hurt and he even gets tied up to a machine three times a week for four hours every day. Uh, that's hard. That's hard. It's hard to accept. What did Jesus go through? A whole lot worse. A whole lot worse. One of the songs, I can't remember which one, I think it was today, yeah, uh, we talked talk about David said, my indiscretions are like broken bones. If you ever had a broken bone, you know how painful they are. Edith broke two year, two months ago. She's still hurting, still has pain. Uh, I broke an ankle 15 years ago. From time to time, it still hurts. I said to the Lord, break the bones in my heart. Now we all know there are no bones in the heart, but we need to be hurting in the heart for disappointing God. David said, Lord, I, I sinned and I did this.
this and I did that and I, I, I disobeyed and uh, I, I sinned against the people. But first of all, I sinned against you. I sinned against you. Everything you do, every worry you have, every time you get mad at somebody on the road, you do a little sin. And you know what? It's just like slapping God in the face. Because he's made it all possible for us to live a victorious life. Now we don't go on emotion. But I miss the emotion. I miss the emotion. I miss people praising God and being free in their worship. Um, Something has kind of tightened. The enemy is wanting to shut Oak Point down. Um, <clears throat> one of Corley's main worries, how's the church going to operate money-wise? Tithes and offerings are off. We've had to cut back on a couple of missionaries. Do you know how painful that is? Do you know how that disappoints God? You know how Coralie says, I don't worry, but she does because she feels responsible. Do you know how Ken and Lynn and I feel? Same way. We're failing because we're getting lax. And we're getting lax because we've lost our joy. And God wants us to straighten up and do some things right. You need to get along with God more often. You need to pray. You need to have a serious prayer in this church as a corporate body, uh, more than just over the offering and when we open up and when we close. We need more. We need more prayer. We need we need to be able to look out. It used to, used to be, and I've told you this before, it used to be I would look out, sitting at the piano, thank God for Betty, because she never slows down. And I, God would put a light around somebody. Just a, I don't know if I've ever told you about that, but there'd be a light. And I'd get up, leave the piano, leave Betty on her own, knowing that she could handle it, knowing that God had put her there for that reason. And I would go and I would minister. I haven't done that for a long time. I've seen other people get up and go and hug someone and minister to them. Uh, I haven't seen that for a long time. Now, I am not pointing fingers at you because you see in the old thing, drops you to say three of them are pointing back at me. Uh, I've been really guilty of you guys, and I'm willing to admit it. And I did admit it, and I asked God to forgive me, and I asked God to redeem me again, and to renew me, and to refill me again. In the last four days, that's what he's been doing. Uh, Psalms 118, 24. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. Uh, Psalms 30 and 5. Weeping. Uh, can't remember any of you guys. Weeping lasts for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Psalms 37, 4. Delight yourself in the Lord. And supply all of our needs. If you delight yourself in the Lord, He will supply all of your needs. Psalms 37 4 says that. Isaiah 61 3 says, uh, Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Lift up your hands to the Lord. Worship and praise. Worship and praise. Forget about yourself. Forget about if the person next to you thinks you're crazy because you got your hands in the air and you're praising. Forget about that, because you're talking with God. Your heart is in tune with his heart when you worship and praise him. The biggest reason we have to rejoice is our salvation. The next biggest reason we have, and maybe even the most important, is he loves us. Regardless of how lazy and slothful and critical we get. You know, we're big time critics of one another. Uh, Coralie commented on, <laughs> and I thought about this when I got here today. Coralie commented on, I don't know how to say this, that I smile more, especially.
actually if I can go back in the office and talk with the pastor. Well, you want to know why? Because pastor's telling me to sing a new, a new song. Praise. Worship it. Be happy. Be glad. He's encouraging me. And when I come out here, I have a smile on my face because I feel like I matter. Well, God says you do matter. And God says you're going to start smiling more and you're going to start encouraging more and you're going to start telling people. Sing. Sing a new song. Now, Edith, that wasn't anything like Sunday school, was it? No. Like I say, I laid awake. I didn't go to sleep until after 3 last night and I was awake at 6 this morning. So I didn't have very much rest. And the whole time that I was saying, well, I'm going to say this and I'm going to tell that and I'm going to share this. And one, of the, one of the things I will share with you is a guy named Rodney, whatever it is, he's Great Awakenings on Hillsong. I don't know if he's a guy from, actually from Africa, but he lives here in the United States. And he said he came from Africa to be a missionary in the United States. But he was telling a story, and then this really happened. I, I had to go back and listen. Um, this happened supernaturally. Um, there was this missionary, is this missionary, up in the Arctic Circle in Siberia. And uh, it's long distances between villages and stuff. And God showed him, I guess on Google it said, that there was this village way out on the edge of the tundra way out on the water. Nobody ever went there. Or any roads here. No way to get there. No roads. I mean, we're talking going over the tundra. Uh, you, it's impossible to do. Uh, the only way you could do is, that, I guess, that they flew in things or you went by boat because they were a fishing village. So he says to his wife, said to his wife one day, God says, we need to go here. And she said, well, how are we going to get there? So he said, God, how are we going to get there? Now we're talking Siberia. Somehow God provided them with an old Russian tank. And they set out. They were in their 60s. They set out across the tundra. And I don't know how many hours. I mean days, a couple of days. Sitting in this cramped tank. Which probably they were freezing to death. You know. But finally they got to the village. And when they did. The head man came out. He was kind of confused. He said, what are you doing here? And the preacher said, well, God told me to come here and minister to you people. And the head man said, what took you so long? When he said, what took you so long, it echoed in my ears, in my room. I, and I went back and listened, and it, it didn't echo. But God said to me, what took you so long? He said they'd been praying, saying, God, if you're out there, send somebody. We need to hear your word. What took you so long? You know, we don't have much time left. So, that's what God has laid on my heart to give to you. You need to get your joy back in shape. You know, when you get saved, God gives you a measure of faith. Uh, and he gives you this and he gives you that but you know things happen as they go along and your faith increases your patience increases you gotta feed it you gotta feed it and the only place you can feed it is God is the source of our food and our liquid spiritually and physically but spiritually we need to pay more attention to the spiritual man Father, I just come to you. <laughs> and I didn't really say any of the things that I thought I was going to say. I trust, Father, that I, I pray, I, I, I pray, Father, that I, I said the things that you wanted me to say, and that I, that I was able to show I'm sincere. Lord, I, I want a new renewal. I want that right spirit back in me. I want all of those things, Lord. I want to be free to worship in the spirit. I want to be free, Lord, to do what you want me to do. I want that for each and every one that's in here, Father God. And I ask you, Lord, 
challenge their hearts and minds. And if there's anything between you and whoever's in here that needs to hear this, Lord, I ask you to just begin to work on that thing. I ask you, Father, to bless each one. I ask you, Father, to increase each one. I ask you, Father, to do what you promised to do. Fill us, Lord, completely till we are absolutely tamped down and running over. We can't run on empty. We've got to keep the tanks full. In Jesus' name. Yay! Thank you.